Hey guys, welcome back to the Garden Channel. I know it has been a while since I have uploaded on this channel and it's not because I don't love it. I have just been getting killed with the Southern Californian drought <laughs> that we have had over the last few years. So it is spring and I am in the process of starting to plant my garden again. And I thought while we wait for things to come up so that I can give you a spring garden tour, I would take you back to how this garden actually came to be. Because I got a lot of questions over the last few uploads of, did this garden always look like this? Did you move into this house and the garden was here? And no to all the above. So the inspiration for this garden actually came from a trip that my husband and I took probably about 15 years ago. Before we had kids and we were newly married, we just decided on a whim, let's go to France and visit the Chateaus of the Loire. <laughs> so we took two weeks and we went visiting all of these amazing chateaus and had such a great time. And one of my favorites was one called Chateau Villandry. The vegetable garden at the this property is like nothing I have ever seen. And I just remember being surrounded by all these beautiful vegetables in this beautiful garden. And I thought, I have got to recreate this somehow at home. Cut to a few years later when my husband and I were saving for a house and we found this property that was a foreclosure. It was actually owned by the bank and nobody wanted it because it was a tiny house on a big piece of land. We liked the little house on the big property because when we saw it, we immediately looked at each other and thought, this is it. This is where we can build our beautiful garden inspired by villainry. <laughs> so we took half the front yard and literally just cut it in half and decided that this would be our garden plot. It's about 80 feet by maybe 20 feet. And I remember everybody thought we were nuts. They looked at us and thought, you guys don't know how to grow anything. You're gonna turn this whole yard into a vegetable garden? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> So my husband drew a sketch and we decided we would have two groupings of parterres uh, with five plots each. And then in the center is where we would put our dining table. Because this house doesn't actually have a dining room, so my idea, because we live in Southern California, was let's create an outdoor dining room. So I wanted a place that we could dine in and actually entertain in and wouldn't look like an overgrown garden. So we pulled up all the grass and in its place, we added gravel because we wanted something that would be drought tolerant. Um, since vegetable gardening does take a lot of water, I didn't want to use any excess water on grass. I wanted to save all the water for the actual vegetables and line the parterres with bricks so that the potting soil wouldn't leach out as we watered the garden. And I have some really cute pictures of my daughter and I, she was three at the time, she's tw almost 12 now, planting those first seeds, being in this huge garden plot, and people would come over and say, what are you doing? <laughs> are you really gonna grow all these vegetables? And I was like, yeah, I am. And then after we laid the bricks for the parterres, we added some boxwood. And I love boxwood because it's very slow growing, so you can add really nice little parterre hedges that don't need much upkeep because it doesn't grow very fast. Another reason why we chose this part of the property for the vegetable garden is because it already had the beginning of two sides of a wall. So we had a nice corner there. And I just had these dreams of these sort of walled gardens of Europe that you see where you feel like you're enclosed in your own secret garden. So half of the work was kind of already done for us. Then to cover the white wall, we decided to grow some creeping fig. So creeping fig is something that grows really well here in Southern California, but it does take some time. And you'll see in some of those early photos, you just see these little stalks that are kind of peeking up, growing onto the wall. But then eventually over time, it does attach itself to the wall and then will start to kind of creep up. And the secret with creeping fig I found is you have to cut it. As painful as that is, you've gotten a certain amount of creeping to happen and then you have to go in there and cut it, but that does stimulate it so that it'll creep more. And eventually it covered the entire wall and then started to cover the back wall and really created a beautiful greenery that became kind of like the backdrop of this garden. And then we enclosed the garden on the other side by building a ficus hedge. And this is another thing that takes a little bit of time, but I highly recommend it because it will grow so tall. The secret with ficus though, is to let it grow really tall first until you get the height you want and then trim it and then it'll fill out. And then we added a garden gate and then up above it created like a form that the ficus could grow up onto. So my husband had this idea where he wanted to create kind of like a decorative hedge, almost like a topiary that would be trimmed. And I was a little skeptical in the beginning. I actually didn't think that ficus would do that, but sure enough it did. <laughs> 
And then we did the same thing on the other side. So by the house, when we originally bought it, it was sort of this yucky brown color and had this sort of hideous looking gate that connected the side garden to the vegetable garden. Well, we took that gate off and eventually created another form, another arch that we grew ficus up and around. And that also really helped hide the neighbor's yard too. Because we were looking at their brown house. <laughs> and now we look at a beautiful green hedge. So now we've added another row of ficus that we're going to grow up past the wall. And then that way it'll be the same height as the hedge on the other side and really create this beautiful walled garden effect. And then the other thing we added were just some obelisks in the center of each parterre. And I found that that also created really nice architecture that when things were not growing in the garden, you still had structures to look at, but they also play double duty because they're great for growing cucumbers or beans. Any type of climbing plant will also grow up on there. And then once we had the garden for about a year and a half, we wanted to add some fruit trees, but we didn't really have a lot of room to grow six mature fruit trees. So we did what the Europeans always did and we just espaliate them, which is to take the tree and have it grow out, actually prune it and train it to grow that way. So now we have two apricot trees, two plum trees, and two nectarine trees that would be really hard to have if they grew upright, so instead they're growing out. And then another thing that's part of the design of this garden is the furniture and the planters we chose. So we kept everything a forest green so that when you look out there, all of the plants pop and all of the furniture just kind of goes into the background. So we have a table out there with chairs, which is great for entertaining. I remember when we had our first Thanksgiving out there and I think everybody who didn't believe that we were gonna do this, when they came for Thanksgiving, they looked at us and thought, wow, you guys really did this. <laughs> we were like, yeah, we did. One thing I learned with having a garden this size and maintaining it is I was spending a lot of time back and forth going to the garage for shovels and pots and fertilizer. So my husband for a Mother's Day gift one year built me this beautiful garden shed that arrived and it was so spanky new and clean and had this beautiful little copper top. Now it's worn and it sort of uh, has a more well-loved look to it. This garden has been growing now for probably over 10 years and little by little it starts to add more character to it. I think that's the thing about gardens is that you plant it and it can feel very new and kind of stark in the beginning, but every summer it starts to fill in a little bit more and a little bit more until suddenly one day you're left with something that feels so healthy and beautiful and you feel like it's just always been that way. I can remember our first harvest in the late summer when we had first planted this garden was one of the more rewarding things. <laughs> we went out there and it was almost like we had a grocery store in our backyard. And I can remember the pile of tomatoes that we would pick, the fresh lettuce, the eggplants. It was such an amazing experience that I highly recommend it, especially if you have children, even if you're single and you wanna grow something, there's nothing more satisfying than growing your own fruits and vegetables. I think there's something also that's really sweet and special to me about starting a family and starting a garden at the same time. To sort of chart the growth of the garden and how it evolves and changes and matures. And to chart the growth of my children and my family and how they change and grow and mature. This house is so special to us because we kind of rescued it, we've put our own spin on it, we've brought it back. And I think I tell my children when they say, why do you spend so much time out in that garden? Is because I'm building grandmother's house, is what I tell them. I say, I'm gonna haunt this house one day. So me and my garden will be out there for hopefully many years to come. All right, you guys, so that's my before and after garden story of how this piece of property came to be. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an update, and I will see you back here next time with some more fun gardening tips. Until then, bye.